Good morning. And welcome, welcome to St. John. Um, Whoa, what a wonderful morning for confirmation, or as we like to say more formally, affirmation of baptism. We have nine students who for the past three years have been in um, very deep study, right? Very deep study, pondering, discerning, and finally arriving at this morning, not without some special help from Ben Berg, from their small group guides, um, from Angie and from Tracy, and importantly, from their families, and even more importantly, from all of you to come to this day where they will, with their own voice, affirm their faith. So we will be doing other things as well during the service, but that's kind of the big thing we're doing today. However, I have a few announcements before I I kind of go in a little more depth about today. Um, First of all, I want, for those of you who who will be joining or contemplating joining as a member um, the first Sunday in June, we will have our second Member Exploration Seminar. That's the new word. I'm, that's what I'm calling it now. And that will happen, and I'm going to qualify this, as soon as our service is done and everyone has a chance to get coffee, including me, downstairs in the fellowship hall. We may go over a bit in our worship service, so it'll kind of uh, be determined on when we end, then downstairs we go. And that will be about 45 minutes for those of you who are here and attending. Um, So the other thing I want you to know about is on the podium, you may have seen a half sheet of paper that looks like this. And on it, it says special support giving. Some of you know, some of you may not know that um, we are um, assisting and really in coming to know and partnering with um, a family from Haiti, um, with Ibermante and Isme and Edens, and um, they've come here and we are helping them with the next steps. One of those things that will be helpful for them is some financial support, and so We ask, the church is committed already in in many ways, as well as financially, but if you would also like to support them, um, you can do it by scanning the QR code that's on this half sheet. Um, You can put uh, a check in the offering plate and simply memo um, special support Haitian family, um, or you come into the office and do it that way as well. So this is one of the ways we are called to reach out in love. So I know each and every one of you will think of how that that works for you. Additionally, we also need a few more people, two or three more people, who are willing to learn, as Pastor Don and I are learning, what it takes to come to this country um, and, and find a safe new home here. The immigration process, establishing oneself in this community, Um, All of those things. And so if you are someone who says, I think I have some time to dedicate to this and to learning this process and walking with the family, then please see me, see Pastor Don, call us up this week because um, we're really learning a lot, but more people need to know what's going on and also help. So there's that. The other piece of paper, if you don't already have one, but I think Andrea was making sure you would, um, are the faith statements that our confirmants have written. So we um, ask them to do something that I don't know that we ask everybody in church to do, although maybe we should. We ask them to write a faith statement that says in their own words what they believe currently, right now. We know that those things change. We grow and expand on those things as we age. But for right now, this is what they believe about God, about Jesus, about the Spirit, about church, about themselves. So if you don't have one of these, as you leave, please take one. And as well, it has their name. You'll hear their name multiple times this morning. Their name that they were given as they were baptized, 
the name that they're living into. Uh, and so important for you also to learn and remember their name. And then next time you see them, if their name is new to you, greet them with their name. So there's your, there's your challenge and your charge. I want to thank Andrea um, and Wendy, who were our synod delegates. They went yesterday to the South Central Synod's annual meeting and gathering, um, and there will be more from them about what they heard and how they participated in the work and ministry and conversation of the Synod. So look to your newsletters and other avenues for learning about that. Pastor Don was there as well. Um, and in the next few weeks, we will recognize our seniors and graduate, or high school and, and college graduates, if we have any, our scholarship award recipients, all of those things, as well as receive new members. So come back to church. Now, are there other announcements that we need to know? Are there prayer requests that you bring to this group? Yes. Absolutely. Prayers for Andrea's sister. Andrea, a name? Jane, prayers for Jane. We will keep Jane in our prayers this week and the following weeks. Are there other prayer requests? Certainly for our confirmands and, uh, and their families too on this special day and their mentors. Well, seeing no other announcements or prayer requests, I am now going to invite you to rise in your body or in your spirit for our call to worship. We will put the parts of the service um, that are ones that we do together up on the screen, so look to the screens. We are gathered in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit to know and proclaim Jesus Christ and as disciples reach out in love. Let us worship the Lord. as we have just a few more weeks. In fact, next week ends the Easter season. It will be Pentecost next week. Um, this will be the last time that we liturgically, in the middle of the service, do a thanksgiving for baptism, but it, boy, it makes sense on a baptismum and affirmation of baptism day that we would do this. And so I greet you again. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the waters of baptism, we've passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery, for this water, let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters, you flood us with mercy. Our sin is drowned forever. You opened the gate of righteousness and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and you send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You've become our salvation. Now, breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving now and forever. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning is 720. You can follow in the red hymnals or along on the screens, but we do sing together.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we have our special music with the bells this morning. our bell ringers. They are going to take just a few minutes to move their tables, um, and uh, then we'll proceed in the service with the confirmands reading the scripture verses that they've chosen. They are the ones that are on their stoles. Um, so we'll just take a minute to, to reset.
realize that when you come to church, you can build your muscles. So this is what we do. We, there, I, all, I call it feats of strength. Hello, my name is Angelie Dabney. My Bible verse is John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, so that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. <clears throat> my name's Bradley Jorgensen, and my scripture verse is Isaiah 43:1b. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Morning. My name is Carson Hainish. My Bible verse is 2 Corinthians 13, 13. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Wait, I have to flip it. Hello, my name is Cheyenne Rope. I have the second Samuel 22, 33. The God who has girded, girded me with strength and has opened wide my path. My name is Julia Roeder, and my Bible verse is the first Corinthians 16, verses 13 through 14. Keep alert, stand firm in your faith, be courageous, be strong, let all that you do be done in love. My name is Abby Shields, and I have Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven. He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. My name is Ava Smith. My verse is Genesis twenty-eight fifteen a Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. My name is Trevor Westfall, and my scripture verse is Matthew 17, 4. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Chapter 28. Glory to you, o Lord. Now even the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You can sit down now. You don't have to stand the whole time I talk. That'd be weird. Good morning. I'm Ben. If you don't know who I am, I'm the Youth and Family Ministry Director here at St. John Lutheran Church. And so... I've had the pleasure of knowing, well, most of these kids since before they were even born. So that's pretty crazy for me. So I uh, started here in 2004, so that just, that's crazy. But this group has had quite the wild ride, though, as well, because they started their confirmation process off on Zoom. Yeah, crazy to think that we started our confirmation process on Zoom, meeting over the computer, and all that crazy fun times during COVID, right? Was it fun? No. No, it was not very fun. But we did it. And then they transitioned to in-person learning, 
and doing stuff here at church and still kind of trying to be separated and all that kind of stuff to having their mentorship program over the years. It's been a great ride. We've had a lot of fun playing some games, talking about what our faith means to us. And it's evident in their faith statements of where they are in their faith. And I picked our um, gospel reading today because it's a great example of we're affirming our faith today. You get to affirm what you believe. You're going to come up here. You're going to kneel. It's going to be amazing. Your mom and dad might cry a little bit. They're going to take more pictures. It's a wonderful celebration of your faith and the next step in your journey. And we get to affirm what we did in our baptismal font many, many years ago when your parents stood up and said, I'm going to raise you in the church. They've done their job. They got you to this point. The congregation has done their job. They got you to this point. Pastor Beth and I have done our jobs. We've got you to this point. And at this point, you get to come up and you get to affirm everything that you believe. And you get to say, yes, I do. I do believe that Christ is my Savior. I do believe that he's the Lord of my life. And now you get to go out and live it. You get to affirm everything that we talked about in baptism, that we are going to be raised as children of God, and you're going to be raised in the light. And you're going to come to know who he is and know his great love that he has for you. But now, after you've affirmed that, you get to go out and show the world everything that you have learned. It says, now I command you to go to baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You get to go share your faith. We've com been commissioned to go do that. Everybody in this congregation has helped you along your faith journey, whether you realize it or not. They've been praying for you. They've been walking alongside you. They've been there to mentor you and to guide you. And now you get to take that faith and you get to go out and you get to share it with the world. And you get to mentor and you get to guide and you get to bring that next generation into the faith as well. It's an amazing task that we are, ta that we are given. And it's not an easy one. Never in there does Christ say, it's going to be a walk in the park because I'm walking right alongside you. And that is evidenced by the fact that you have journeyed through a pandemic. You have journeyed through other hardships. And Christ has been there walking alongside you the whole way. And he'll continue to walk alongside you as you go out into the world. And you continue to show what your faith is. And how your faith interacts in your life. And you get to share that light with anybody and everybody that you come in contact with. You don't have to use a lot of words. You just have to be kind and loving and caring. And people will see that Christ is living through you. And that your light is shining because Christ's light is shining in you. So as you go forth today and as you go forth for the rest of your life, now that you have affirmed your faith, your faith never leaves you. It will always be with you, just like the Holy Spirit is always with us and guiding us. But you are called to go forth and continue to make disciples. Continue to show what, who Christ is in your life and how Christ is evident and works through you. You guys are awesome. So are you, everybody else. But you guys are awesome. And Christ is going to do great things in you. And you're going to do wonderful things throughout the rest of your faith journey. And always remember that Christ's light and Christ's life is in you and through you and will continue to be there in the highest of highs, in the lowest of lows, and everything in between. Proud of you guys. It's going to be a great journey. Amen. So we will sing now, everyone. Everyone will sing, but you don't have to stand up. We'll let you sit down. But we'll sing 685, Take My Life That I May Be, verses 1, 2, 3, and 6. Remember those verses. <laughs>
before Ben introduces each of our confirmands by name and presents them to us, I would like to recognize a group of individuals who this last year have um, spent time, spent time here at church, but outside of church too with these young people. And so if you've mentored one of these young people, I'm going to make you stand up right now. So please stand if you were one of the mentors for our confirmands. Thank you, thank you for your dedication. You clap for them. <laughs> you can sit down too. Now we will begin our, our service of confirmation, our affirmation of baptism. If you wish to follow along in the hymnal, you can start on page 234. However, we will also have on the screens all of the things we need to say. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for these people, one with us in the body of Christ, who are making public affirmation of their baptism. And as I say your names, you guys can stand up, okay? And then we'll, I present Anjali, who desires to make public affirmation of their faith. I present Bradley, who desires to make public public affirmation of their faith. I present Dylan, who desires to make public affirmation of their faith. I present Carson, who desires to make public affirmation of their faith. I present Cheyenne, who desires to make public affirmation of their baptism. I present, oh my God, my blanking. <laughs> Julia, oh my God. Okay, again, who desires to make public affirmation of their baptism. I present Abby, who desires to make public affirmation of their baptism. I present Ava, who desires to make public affirmation of their baptism. And I present Trevor, who desires to make public affirmation of their baptism. I would ask that we all be together in prayer. Merciful God. We thank you for the sisters and brothers, the siblings who you've made your own by water and the word in baptism. You've called them to yourself, you've enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you've brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. I ask you to profess your faith in Jesus Christ, reject sin, and confess the faith to the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world and, the rebel, and rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? And I'll ask the congregation to rise as we profess our faith together. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. I invite the congregation to sit down, but the confirmands can remain standing. <laughs> you all have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people? To hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper? to proclaim the good news of God and Christ through word and deed, to serve all people, following the example of Jesus, 
and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. And beginning with Anjali, I'm going to ask each one of you, guess what? It's probably up there to say, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Anjali? People of God, do you promise to support these sisters and brothers and pray for them in their life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. You may be seated, confirmands. I always say this is, this is the part that is um, just the one that I, your parents will cry, maybe. We will be inviting each of the confirmands forward, and Ben is going to explain what happens next. So as they come forward, we'll have the outside will come in, so Angelie will start over here, Trevor will start over here, and they'll come up and they'll kneel, and this is where audience participation is welcomed. Then all their family and any members that would like to come up and lay hands on them are more than welcome to, and we will say a little prayer over them, and then they'll get a cross, they'll get their certificate, and then they'll go sit back down. And while that is happening, Bradley will be standing over here on the on-deck circle, and his family's all over here, unfortunately. And they're going to come and try to get, get over here, and kind of, or they can just come up when. But then the confirmand will be on, in the on-deck circle ready to come up next, and then you can proceed to come forward and lay hands on them as well. So just trying to make it low a little smooth, but that's okay if it doesn't either. Further ado, um, we are going to first invite Anjali, her family, and friends, her mentor, anyone who wishes to come and affirm her faith, to please come on up, come on up, and find a spot. I say find some real estate to lay your hand upon her. No one knows this is heavy, heavy stuff. Um, and Ben will offer a prayer for her. And Trevor, you can stand up and come on over here. Sir and Angie, the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, All right, I'd like to invite Trevor's family, his friends, his mentor to come on up here and lay a hand on him. gentle hand. <laughs> There's no tickling. We've said this before. <laughs> Stir up in Trevor the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. And we'd like to give gifts and so if you didn't see, Ben has a cross for each of our confirmands, and we have a certificate as well. Congratulations. Bradley, come on up. And Bradley's family. That's going to work perfect. Spirit. 
<laughs> we plan this. <laughs> So Ava has come forward with um, her, the family, which is also many of Bradley's family members. Her mentor is invited to come forward and any family, other family and friends who, who wish to do so. And I always say, if you can't quite, we can do this by touching the person in front of you. You can lay a hand on a shoulder. All right. Stir up in Ava the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, spirit of counsel and might, of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Well, Dylan Hansen is coming up and his family, his mentor, those who have gathered to support him. Abby Shields now comes forward with her family, her mentor, and those who wish to lay a hand upon her. Stir up in Abby the gift of your Holy Spirit the spirit of wisdom and understanding, of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Carson. And any of Carson's family, mentor, friends, other confirmands, you never know. And all gather around. There we go. Ethan needs to come down, of course. And Julia is going to come forward, her family, her mentor, her friends. Oh, you, you go right ahead, Natalie. We got everybody? Okay. Stir up in Julia the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. <laughs> and Cheyenne, come on up. And Cheyenne's family and friends and mentor. Just, we're avoiding a traffic jam. There we go. <laughs> Ooh. 
just going to make it really awkward. <laughs> Everyone's safe. Okay. Stir up in Cheyenne the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. And just as Cheyenne sits down, I'm going to have those confirmants stand up and turn and face the congregation as we welcome you and as we give you a round of applause. We are a church that claps. And as I encourage us to rejoice, let us rejoice with these sisters and brothers in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Amen. So I'm not going to make them stand for the rest of the service there. They're going to turn and they're going to sit back down. However, at the end of the service, you can sit down. No, no, go ahead. That's all right. All right. At the end of the service, um, during the final hymn, Ben and I will process, recess, we'll recess out, um, and we're going to ask you to follow us out. So you're going to get to walk right with us out the door, and then hang out for just a bit. I know we've got lunch plans and all kinds of fun things, but to let the congregation have a chance to welcome you, uh, I think, is a good idea. Thank you. This has been a fabulous class whom I have enjoyed immensely. Now, we will continue with prayers and I'm going to let Ben do the heavy lifting right now as he resets some of this stuff. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of harmony, as you drew your son to your side, you draw us to you and unite us with the planet and one another. Weave your church together in a web of mutual love for the sake of the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. As your spirit hovered over the waters of creation, so your spirit hovers over all that you've made. Bless the water that sustains the planet and grant wisdom to use it wisely. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You empower your people with the fire of your spirit. Challenge activists and organizers, teachers and politicians and all in leadership to speak a message of peace and justice. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You care for all your children. Show your steadfast love to those suffering isolation, especially exiles or refugees or prisoners. Break the chains of all held fast by systemic oppression of any kind. Comfort all who are afraid or suffering from illness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks that humankind serves as your body in the world, stewarding your abundant gifts. Guide this congregation's leaders as they seek your will. We pray for our staff and council. We pray for our newly confirmed. We pray that they are guided by you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great, as always in keeping with God's commandment that we pray for others. We pray for those who celebrate their birthday this month. And so we pray for Dan. We pray for Beth. We pray for Sheila. We pray for Mary. We pray for Savannah. We pray for Chris. And we keep the mission and ministry of St. John Lutheran Church in Janesville, Wisconsin in our prayers as well. Now, Lord, we will fill this space with the prayers of our hearts 
It may be quiet, they may be unspoken, but we know they are always heard. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You raise your saints to new life in Christ. We give you thanks for all your saints who've given us glimpses of your redeeming love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And even though we're seated, we could stand and turn and pass the peace to those around us. A high five, a peace sign, a friendly gesture, a smile, and then be seated for the morning offering. Please rise in your body or your spirit. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.
it is indeed right, our duty, our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures and the angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise their name and we join their unending hymn, which we're actually not going to sing though, because we, we decided not to do that today. And so we continue with the story. We sing some things, we don't sing other things. The story that we tell at this table is of Jesus with his disciples, with his friends, eating a meal. It was the night as well of his betrayal. And he took bread and he gave thanks and then he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after that supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one as we are by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Come and know Christ, broken and poured out for you. You may be seated. In this church, we practice open communion. What that means is anyone who wishes may come forward and participate in the feast, receive the bread and the cup. You will come forward, as the ushers indicate, and receive first a wafer. We have a gluten-free alternative. If you need that, simply let us know. You'll take and you'll eat. Then proceed to the communion assistants who will have the tray of cups, Rachel and Bob, and indicate whether you want a cup with dark-colored wine or a cup with light-colored juice. Take and drink. And on your way back to your seat, there are baskets for you to put your cup in. If you wish to come forward but not commune, but would like a blessing, simply indicate this to us by crossing your arms. Come, for all is ready.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you've nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. And before the blessing, just a reminder that during the final hymn, the acolytes will will extinguish the candles. Ben and I will head on out as well as the confirmands to greet you in the narthex. Now, a blessing, the words for your journey. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Our sending hymn this morning is Crown Him with Many Crowns, verses 1, 4, and 5. Go in peace, serve the risen one. Thanks be to God.